Hi everybody, I want to take a few moments to show you how to use a text editor with regular expressions, uh, pattern matching that you can use for super powerful find and replace tasks. So I'm going to launch um, Visual Studio Code, which is one type of text editor here. And I, on the left window, I'm going to be keeping track of what we're doing here. This is kind of my little script, uh, things we need to talk about. You can use it as an outline for this talk. And on the right side is a real quick example. Uh, a short snippet of text, um, much too short. You would be using regular expressions for longer uh, bits of text where you need to be doing massive find and replace. And here, this is just a short one for our example. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do is just talk about generally uh, finding stuff in a text editor. Uh, as with any word processor or anything like that, uh, if you're on a PC, you can use Control F if you're on a Mac, you can use Command F, so I'm hitting Command F here, and I'm going to look for, um, oh yeah, the word photo, sure, the word photo, and you can see in this text editor, it's highlighting the two occurrences of the word photo. If I want to look for the word John, uh, it's highlighting the words John there. One of the things you can do, getting right into it, the regular expressions, again, just codes that you can use for powerful pattern matching. So if I want to look for things that occur at the beginning of a line, I can use that caret key, the shift six there. So um, if I go over here and I'm looking for caret John, it's only going to find occurrences of the word John that appear at the beginning of a line because I've told it to look for that particular regular expression. You need to make sure, if that's not working for you, you need to make sure that the regular expression pattern matching has been clicked here uh, in Visual Studio Code. You have to click that button for it to work. Um, if you don't have that button clicked, then it's not really going to, it's going to be looking for the character caret rather than the pattern caret. So we're trying to look for those patterns there. Likewise, you can see over here another thing that you can match for is the end of a line. So if I'm looking for, say, um, over on this side, if I'm looking for education, the word education, there's a couple of occurrences. If I want to find only educations that occur at the end of a line, I'll put that dollar sign in there. And that's the symbol for end of a line. So only this education matches that particular pattern. That's kind of cool. Uh, what else? You can see other things in the regular expression code world. Uh, characters typically match themselves. Almost all of them do. So if I'm over here and I'm looking for uh, all the O's, in this document. It's going to highlight all those O's there. I can see those. That's kind of nice. All the A's. There's all the A's. If I want to look for all the occurrences of OO, I can put those in there and those are my double O's. So yeah, that's working pretty nicely. Another thing that you can do though, there's a, an interesting code here. The period matches any character. So if I come back over here and start looking for things like a period, well any character, that's literally every character over here on the side. So uh, that period is going to be matching a bunch of things. Now, why would that be useful? What, how is that helpful? Well, what if I wanted to find all the characters that occur at the end of a word? Um, one of the things I could do is I could say, well, I'm going to look for any character followed by a space. And so that's going to get all the characters, maybe. All the characters that occur at the end of a word. Here's an O that's at the end of a word, an F that's at the end of the word, an N that's at the end of the word. There might be some problems with that. It looks like I accidentally picked up this comma with a space. This is actually picking up any character that has a space after it. So if we wanted to actually just get the ends of words, we'd have to be a little bit more crafty about that. But this is a, one example of how you can match, use that period to match just anything and then maybe then further specify what you're looking for. Um, back over here on the outline, you can see the asterisk matches zero or more of something, and the plus sign matches one or more of something. So what does that mean? Um, well, what if I'm looking over here on the right side? What if I'm looking for uh, all my A words? That's going to be an A followed by a number of characters. Uh, uh, there's an A followed by a single character. If I want to get more characters, I can do A one or more, uh, or sorry, sorry, zero or more, and that's going to get all the rest of that line there. If I really just want to get the word, I'm going to have to be a little bit craftier about that, but this will get things that start with A. Um, 
So that's kind of cool. We'll see some other examples of that maybe in a few minutes. Looking over here, if I want to look for sets of characters, if I want to get any vowel character, I can put those in square brackets. That indicates that you've got a set of characters that you're working with. So um, yeah, let me look for all the vowel characters over here. Now I've highlighted all the A's, E's, I's, O's, and U's there. If you want to get not vowel characters, you'd put the up arrow in there, or the caret rather, uh, caret, A-E-I-O-U. Caret, when it's not in the square brackets, it means beginning of the line. But here, when it's in square brackets, it means not. So this is finding all the characters that are not A-E-I-O or U. It's kind of interesting. And um, you can make longer, you can do uh, regular expressions, notice things like A to Z. It understands that A to Z is a thing, or capital A to capital Z. So this is finding basically all the letters there, all the regular letters, normal, normal alphabetical characters. There are some other patterns that we can look for. Non-printing characters include a backslash N, which is a new line character, and backslash T. So let me see, that's the tab character. Let me go over here and see if there are any tabs in here. I'm looking for a uh, tab, and it doesn't look as if there are any tab characters in there, so I'm not finding anything. Any new lines? Looks like there's a new line, a non-printing new line character at the end of every line, including at these blank lines up here. So if I wanted to uh, do something with all those new line characters, I could. And I will, maybe in just a moment. Other characters you can look for include the special characters like backslash s. That's a white space character. So if I look for backslash s, that includes things like spaces, tabs, um, yeah, things that are word separators or symbol separators there. I can also do a backslash W to look for word characters. Things like letters and numbers are all word characters. And backslash D looks only for numbers, digits, maybe. It's looking for those numeric digits there. So you can see it's highlighted all the numeric digits. Nice. Um, what, were, what if I were going to look for a phone number? How would I get a phone number? Uh, you know that you'd have a phone number if you had one or more digits with a dash and then one or more digits with a dash and then one or more digits. So that's going to identify those phone numbers on there. That's nice. That's, I could use that and maybe I'll take a look and uh, use that in my example in just a few minutes. You can see if I just do one or more digits here, it's going to grab just those numbers. Here's part of it, and here's part of it, and here's part of it, but it's not going to recognize this entire thing as being a phone number. Back over here, next thing, we can use curly braces to, indica to indicate how many of something that you want to look for. So getting back to those phone numbers, let's, get, let's find um, digits that have exactly three. And you can see it's matching there, three digits there, three digits there, and it's taking these first three here and leaving off that last one because that last one would be four. If you want to get three to four digits, you could put a three comma four, and now it'll take three you know, sequences of three or four digits. That's a nice way of looking at that. If you want to do three or more digits, you can just say three comma, and it'll get all those patterns. Of course, it's not matching those dashes there in the middle. So if you really want to get the whole phone number, you have to give it the whole pattern. You could do something like this, maybe. Dash digits three dash digits four. And that would get that entire phone number. And then you could do something with that. Cool. Well, what about uh, replacing things? So this is interesting. Let's, let's go through. Let's, let's actually do a little activity here, and we'll, we'll figure out the replacing thing in just a moment. Um, but for our activity, what I'd like to do is have you uh, create a phone directory using this text over here. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to try and find patterns, and then we're going to replace those patterns that we find with other things. So that. So first of all, let's find. Um, well, this photo of John Brocker, I don't want that line there. So I'm going to do a search for any line where at the beginning it says 
photo, followed by a bunch of characters. And I'm going to replace that with nothing. I can say, you know, go to the end of the line there and replace that with nothing. If I do that, I've got a couple different options here. Here's replace one of them and then find the next one. This replaces all of them. And you can see that I've highlighted all of them and I'm going to get rid of those. If I replace all of them, I'll do that and it wipes out those lines. I do now have these blank lines here and I don't really want that either, right? Uh, because now I have these new lines that I have to get rid of. I'm going to have to get rid of those at some point. So maybe I could do this. I'm going to command Z to go back and redo that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the beginning of a line, photo, dot star, end of the line, and the new line character, and I'm going to replace all of that with nothing. So that's going to wipe out that new line character as well. When I replace all, we're going to get rid of those. What else can I get rid of here? I can get rid of all the lines that begin with department. Let me get rid of those. Department, it's highlighting those. I don't want those. Uh, the title lines, I don't care about those. Get rid of those. Um, and we're kind of getting down to it. I do have a read bio down here that I need to get rid of. Uh, I'm not going to use a regular expression for that. I'll just delete that line by hand. Um, but here's, here's the interesting thing. I want to get John Brocker and I want to get rid of the new line character, which is right here, and all this business phone stuff, and just replace it with a dash. Let me see what I can do there. So I'm looking for, actually, a new line character that is followed then by business, say, dot star. But I don't want everything. I just only want up to, say, the colon and that space. And I want to get rid of all that and replace that with, let's say, a space dash space and if i replace all those i've got my little phone directory now almost almost it's got the names and the numbers kind of lined up there and that's cool yeah i'm pretty happy with this one thing i don't like i usually look up people uh, alphabetically by last name and this is reversed so this is john brocker and then steve beerman and i need to alphabetize those uh, sort those a little bit i can't sort by the uh first name there because they'll be out of order j and then s these are sorted alphabetically i need to flip those two words around and that's a little bit more sophisticated how do i do that i can do that with regular expressions actually it's really easy so here's what you do i'm going to be looking for a first uh, beginning of the line i'm going to be looking for a word character and one or more word characters and there they are it stops looking when it hits to that gets to that space there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put parentheses around that expression there. And I'm going to do that because over here I'm going to be forming a logical group and I want to be able to refer to that a little bit later on. Another thing that I found there is a space and another word there. And I want to flip those two things around. I want to flip those words around. So I've got the word one and the word two, and I want to make it word two in front and word one over there. Super easy to do. What you do is you just say dollar sign two, which is the second pattern. I'll put a comma between them and then dollar sign one. So any occurrence of those two, which is clearly highlighted here, I'm going to flip those around. So when I run this, you can see that I flipped those around. Ooh, did I put a space there at the beginning? It looks like I accidentally put a space there at the beginning. I'm going to command Z that and make sure I got rid of that space and do that again. Cool. Now I've got Brocker and Bierman with their names, their last names first, and I just need to sort those. Um, so here's a little uh, tip sorting things. I'll highlight the things I'm going to sort. And then over here, there's a, uh, if you go to preferences and extensions, you can do a search for sort there. And sort lines, sort lines of text. This is a great little extension that you can install. Just click down here and install it. And once you've done that, once you've installed that there, then you can highlight these and say view command palette sort lines. You can select this and it'll sort those lines alphabetically. And now Beerman is in front where he should be. Beautiful. That's a great example of using regular expressions to kind of uh, accomplish a task. Uh, I hope this was helpful.